This is one of the biggest mistakes we make for our dogs. I'm talking about a decision that could cut their lives short and no one is warning you enough about the consequences. So buckle up. I'm not just going to tell you how problematic this decision is, but also blow your mind with how this standard procedure can end your dog's life way too early. I'm Dr. Melanie, and today we're going to talk about the biology of desexing your dog. In America, 90% of dogs are desexed. That means that almost all dogs have their organs removed that produce testosterone or estrogen. And we do that when they're just 6 to 12 months old. Why do we do it? Overpopulation, health issues, behavior problems, maybe judgment from others too. But is desexing maybe outdated? Have we enough data to change what's been done for so long? And if we don't change common practices, do we knowingly make our dogs suffer later in life? Let's find out together. Hormones are super powerful. They turn mothers into fearless superheroes, students into nervous wrecks before exams, and athletes into powerhouses for competition. That's all thanks to hormones, pure and simple, from adrenaline to cortisol to sex hormones. Testosterone and estrogen are mostly produced in the testes and ovaries. The brain and kidney can also produce small amounts. Now, most people would say testosterone is the male hormone and estrogen the female hormone, but that is not true. Ovaries produce a lot of testosterone, which they then turn into estrogen. This process is called aromatization. So what's the real difference between male and female? It's not the hormones themselves. It's the enzymes converting testosterone to estrogen. Both males and females produce testosterone but females convert most of it into estrogen. So here we are in the US, desexing our dogs at six to 12 months. They're not fully mature at that age though. We're taking away the hormones that need to grow, they need to grow and develop. And this might just be a huge mistake. We need to rethink this whole process for the sake of our dogs. Now what happens if there is no testosterone or estrogen? Your dog's kidneys, which can also produce sex hormones, but in much, much smaller amounts, try to step up, but that's never going to be enough. When we desex dogs before they're fully matured, we are creating a huge hormone gap. It's a disaster for their bodies. The kidneys might burn out over long term, trying to make up for that gap because early in life. Adrenal diseases like Cushing's disease, are often consequences of that. Now, some might say, I'll just wait a little longer before spaying or neutering my dog. And yes, it's definitely better to wait, but it still puts your dog at risk for other metabolic diseases. Testosterone and estrogen regulate respiratory functions, have anabolic effects, support bone density, and improve overall well being throughout life. These are critical functions essential for your dog's entire life. And science backs this up too. A 2009 study by the Gerald P. Murphy Cancer Foundation found that Rottweilers kept intact until six years of age were four times more likely to reach an exceptional age far beyond the expected range. Four times! Research from the veterinary database shows spayed female dogs are four times more likely to develop heart tumors and have a one in four chance of developing bone cancer. Think about it. Loss of muscle tone, bone density, and energy, these are often seen as normal aging symptoms in dogs. But maybe they don't have to be. We see senior dogs who can't get up anymore due to arthritis, slipping, paralysis. All these horrible things can be linked to taking away the powerful effects of hormones. So why have we normalized such radical procedures that dramatically affect our dog's well-being? For one, we want to avoid overpopulation, which is important no doubt. Shelters are very aware of this issue, so they desex their dogs as young as eight weeks. Laws in places like Georgia require desexing within 30 days of adoption. A shelter in Pennsylvania says puppies have to be desexed at 12 weeks. But these policies are in place because of irresponsible dog ownership. Managing an intact male or female dog requires a high level of commitment, something many dog owners aren't willing to do or totally underestimate the drive of an intact male. 
so it's more convenient to desex as early as possible. But hey, we can do better than removing an entire organ. Procedures like vasectomies or hysterectomies are efficient, safe, and healthier. They prevent reproduction while maintaining normal levels of testosterone and estrogen. A vasectomy involves cutting and sealing the tubes to prevent sperm from entering the ejaculate. A hysterectomy removes the uterus, but not the ovaries, preventing any pregnancy. Veterinarians in the US are starting to get more training on these procedures. The more we as dog owners demand them, the more common they become in veterinary education. By pushing for methods that maintain hormone levels, we can also influence policy changes in shelters and boarding facilities, but it starts with you wanting to do better for your dog. Another argument for desexing is the prevention of other diseases, such as prostate cancer in males. The data, however, is inconclusive and seems to suggest that there is no link between intact dogs and prostate cancer. There is an exception though, when a testis doesn't descend into the scrotum, we talk about a condition called cryptorchidism. Cryptorchidism is relatively common in male dogs and can lead to various health issues if not treated, including an increased risk of cancer and fertility. But what about aggression? Maybe we need to desex to stop aggression. The story of testosterone is a tale as old as time. Back then, a curious scientist managed to chop off a bull's ah. testicle and concluded that something in it makes an animal aggressive. So what evidence do we have? Well, males tend to have higher levels of testosterone and account for a disproportionate percentage of violence. That's true for the human species as well. When males reach puberty, testosterone peaks and so does aggression. But these are just correlations and cannot be considered real proof. Other scientists castrated various species and voila, aggression minimized. Inject testosterone back to normal levels after and aggression rises again. This subtraction and replacement paradigm is pretty good proof, which is why it landed in the textbook and your vet's office as testosterone being the cause of aggression in males. But this is absolutely wrong. Study after study has shown that testosterone does not predict whether or not a male animal is going to show aggressive behavior. What we know now is that the act of aggression elevates testosterone, not the other way around. But why does removing the testes then sometimes minimize aggression? Because testosterone exaggerates aggression, but only what was already there. If you castrate non-aggressive males and inject testosterone after, they won't show any aggression no matter how much they swim in testosterone. Testosterone affects the animal's perception of the trigger. It binds to the amygdala, which determines whether or not something is a threat, and then intensifies the communication between the amygdala and hypothalamus. Just like a volume button, button on your TV can only turn up the volume of a show that is already running, testosterone can only intensify aggression that was already there. It can't make it start. What's more surprising is castrate males that have been aggressive their entire life and the aggression won't go away at all after castration. Social experience can make up for the lack of hormones. And this all speaks to the importance of setting up your management and training early on instead of desexing to fix aggression. If you pay attention to your dog's temperament, tendencies, and interests early on, you can prevent the rehearsal of aggressive behavior, even if your dog is the Arnold Schwarzenegger of testosterone. Desexing dogs does not stop aggression, period. Normal levels of testosterone and estrogen throughout your dog's entire life are important and healthy. But what can you do if you have a desex dog that is starting to show signs of arthritis, loss of muscle tone, and bone density? Testosterone replacement therapy has become a natural treatment option that aims to replenish physiological levels of hormones for both female and male. The side effects and risks are very few, and many dog owners have seen significant improvements in their dog's mobility and health. Injected testosterone increases muscle growth, enhancing muscle coordination and preventing falls. It stimulates so-called satellite cells to repair muscles should your dog get injured. Both testosterone and estrogen inhibit bone tissue breakdown, 
Estrogen also enhances calcium absorption for strong bones, minimizing arthritis, hip dysplasia, and joint issues. All of which can make the aging process for your dog so much more enjoyable. Resexing dogs is an outdated and unnecessary procedure, removing entire endocrine organs that produce hormones essential for your dog's well-being should not be the norm. Let's do better together. That's it for today. I'm Dr. Melanie and I'll see you next time.